Welcome back to this Guild Wars Let's Play. You are Sambo, Seraphis heals a lot, and joining us, as always, is the wonderful forked tongued Regina Lacerda. How are you this evening, Reggie? Hello. Oh, yeah, right. I'm good. Look, she's trying to make it sound like she's all nice and sweet. You know at home, folks, that she's far from it. Well, when it comes to dealing with me anyway. I'm lovely, Sambo. Yeah, hey, yeah. what would you rather? What would you rather, you know, my my you know, style that comes naturally to me or someone who just sits there and goes, Oh, Sambo, you're so right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my Lord. You know what? If you put it that way. <laughs> Put it that way, yeah. You you just keep on being yourself. Actually, that was disturbing. <laughs> that was really disturbing. <laughs> You've put me right off. Oh my god! Thank thank goodness you're not like that. I'll, I'll give you that. Um, anyway, thank and you. I, I'm hoping that everyone watching hopes you're not like that normally as well. Good lord. Anyway, we are going to put you to good use tonight because. Because, of course, if you no, that guys... that dangerous. It does sound dangerous. If you guys were watching at home our last episode, you know that we ended up here after our grand tour of this as we look around and uh, look at all the devastation of old Ascalon City. Holding down our alt key, you'll see that we went and saw die traders, merchants, collectors, skill vendors, rune traders armor merchants and weapon merchants all sorts of things that we spent the whole episode on and i can uh, promise you folks that we're not going to do the same this episode we're definitely going to um, go out and have a bit of a quest because of course we've got one waiting for us but there is one more important thing that we need to cover off and of course as we mentioned really at the end important. of the last episode there is um it's these things here we've got our zunlai chests and of course we have the zunlai agent storage so reggie can you tell us what's going to happen when, uh, well, for a start, what is all this Zunlai stuff? What is a Zunlai chest? What's this uh, Zunlai agent storage? And why, when I click on her, does she say, have you considered purchasing a storage account with the Zunlai guild? Uh, she goes on about 500 years of magic and stuff. And she says for a one-time fee of 50 gold, she can offer permanent access to a Zunlai storage account. So explain to us, what is all this about? Well, Zunlai storage is, as the name suggests, it is storage. So rather than having to carry everything around, you get to store things that you're not going to be using on a quest-to-quest -quest basis in a storage chest, therefore leaving space in your inventory for more goodies. Oh, and we both like that, of course. If I look at my inventory here, of course, we remember last time, although we did buy a couple of bags, we still chock a block here. So, okay, so Reggie. And if those I was to, bag can fill up very quickly. Yeah, they do fill up quick, especially if we're out questing post searing, which we are. So if I was now, I know you don't play WoW, Reggie, but I'm going to explain how it works in WoW. Uh, it's very similar, of course. You have your bag slots, which we're flicking through here. Um, but you have a thing called a bank and you go to a banker and basically they've got a, a whole bunch of empty slots and you can deposit your items in that bank. Now, by the way, that bank is unique to your character in WoW. So, for example, if I had two characters, uh, I can't share the bank between those two characters. It's just unique for that one. And I can buy... Oh, uh, well, there, that just shows how much better Guild Wars is than WoW. Okay, I mean, explain, you know. explain. <laughs> I know that's a big comment and I'm going to get haters for that. Um, <laughs> no. Well, With in terms Wolf, of the bank, how is it better? <laughs> it is better. I believe it is better because instead of being lo um, per character, it's per account. So if you get something really cool with one character and put it in the storage, another character can go and utilize it. Oh, okay. So, hang on. This is interesting because, of course, I have a number of other characters on this account, not just our Seraphis heals a lot. So, you're saying if I buy the storage that this woman is talking about for 50 gold, what that's actually doing is giving me access to my existing storage that I have on all my other characters on this account. Is that right? That's right. And it's not only just for your prophecy char prophecies characters, it's actually all the characters of the expansion packs as well. Oh my god. Okay, well, you know, that's going to be interesting because across all of my characters and across all of the years that I've been playing Guild Wars, I've I have know you that I've collected one or two things there Sambo. I have collected one or two things. I've literally got 
hundreds and hundreds of crafting materials. I've got a fair amount of money. I've got all sorts of unique items and weapons and clothes and all the rest of it. Are you saying once I um, purchase well, go access... Go get it all, Lassie. Go on, go boy, go, go get, get it, it all. So, so once I purchase this for 50 gold, as soon as I open this chest, I'm going to be able to access all of those resources that I've spent so much time gathering on my other characters on this character. Is this what you're saying? You can, you can. It's a little bit feels a little bit like cheating so instead of having to you know collect everything per character from scratch it's just so lovely to have it all yeah oh my god and of course what that means folks is if you remember when we were looking at the armor merchants which are actually just down there those armor merchants where we needed crafting materials to get our next tier of gear i'll be able to um basically um pillage all the crafting materials that i've got on my account already and <laughs> it means i don't have to start from scratch okay well, according to Reggie, let's see what happens if I purchase a storage account. Still have to pay 50 gold. Let's have a look in our inventory here. And I've got 359, so that's not a problem. There we go. Purchase that. Okay, now she's giving me more options, Reggie. I've spent my gold and she's saying, show me my storage account, which is one option, or review mm -hmm. available upgrades. Can I click review available upgrades without breaking anything? It would be best to, yes. Okay, here we go. Review available upgrades okay i can go oh there's links to take me to the guild wars in-game store which i won't do now the nc soft store um crafting material storage and show me my storage account like look just to keep things simple i'm going to go show me my storage account oh look at that there's my vault now hang on a minute i'm going to close that window is that the same window that comes up if i click on the chest and yes it is okay there you go, folks. I'm showing you. I have got one, two, three, four uh, tabs of item storage. And as you can see, they're all chocker full. And you can see I've got purple items here. I've got unique items. I've got masks. I've got all sorts of goodies that I've collected over the years from uh, events and from um, all sorts of things that have happened uh, of, uh, across all of my tunes. You can see them here. We've got insignias, which are upgrade components, which are like runes. Um, I've got hilts, which are upgrade components. I've got crafting materials here. Look at all my dyes. Um, what else have we got? Oh, look at that. We've got daggers. We've got um, all sorts of drops. And what's in here? Look at that. I've got 250 tanned hide squares there. I've got 200 bolts of cloth. I've got bottles of rice wine. I've got rockets. I've got pets. And, of course, I've got a thing here called 4th Anniversary Storage. Now, I don't know if you've got that or not, Reggie, but um, it's the sixth tab, no, fifth tab across fourth anniversary storage, and that was granted to everyone who logged in during the four, uh, fourth anniversary. And I've got uh, all my little miniature pets in there, which are rare collectibles. I've got all sorts of clothes. I've got monastery credits from the uh, uh, factions game. Do you have a fourth anniversary storage slot there, Reggie? I don't. I missed that one. Oh, no. Oh, that's terrible. Yeah, because that's basically a free slot, so that was really good. But, yes, one thing I'm noticing is that what's missing is my specific crafting materials tab. So that's why you said, Reggie, that I have to go and talk to her, right? So I'm presuming I'm going to have to pay some money. Crafting materials storage. Here we go. And, yes, so to access that, I have to pay 50 gold as well. Okay, that's worth it. There we go. And you can see it's popped up there underneath the fourth anniversary storage. I've got a little anvil. If I click on that, you can see that it's this um, huge window full of heaps and heaps of stuff. And I've maxed them out. I've got 250 tanned hide squares, 250 bolts of cloth. I've got bones. I've got wood planks, fibers, you name it. And that's why, in case you were wondering, I've got another 250 tanned hide squares out in a normal storage <laughs> slot. It's because I think, Reggie, these max out at 250. Is that right? There is, yes. There's a limit of 250 um, crafting items. Okay, that's why I've had to spill item, them over yeah. there. You'll also notice up the top here, folks, and we'll wrap this up really quickly, that I've got 42 platinum, 800 gold, and I can withdraw and deposit that money on any tune as I see fit. Um, so if I did want to buy anything else, of course, shoe shopping. I can go shoe shopping. Now, first thing I want to do is I want to drag all my crafting materials from my bags into the crafting window here. And you can see we've got bones. You'll notice it went from 163 to 165. 
Um, what else is crafting material? I'm just going to drag them all in because I honestly can't remember. Granite slabs we've got there. Iron ingots. Icy lodestones. No, they're not crafting. Char carving. They're not. Scale fins. No. Dull carapaces. No. We've got tanned hide squares. Unnatural seeds. Wood planks. They can fit in there. Um, spider legs. We've got all sorts of stuff here. Now, I do know that in my other tabs, I've got some... Uh, stacks of things that we can also add to what do we got here char carvings there we go we can add that in there I've got baked husks so I can put them in my bank you can see folks this is working out very well because I'm basically emptying my bags dull carapa carapaces there they can go in because I've already got stacks well, a lot of, of those things that you're reading out the dull carapaces the char carvings and that they could be salvaged to make more craft materials instead of storing them so you have the option of storing oh. the the original item or salvaging them and getting the crafting material out of it well look at that i did not know that let's try it we'll um salvage a baked husk oh and you're right we've got ourselves a chitin fragment so we'll put that in there oh that's very interesting so i was keeping this so things like fetid carapaces do I not need them for a collector or anything? I can actually, I'm safer to actually salvage them, break them down. You may need them for a collector. You can't, I can't guarantee that you won't. But, oh, but it's an option. If you find that you sort of, yeah, it's an option. So if you find if you get to a collector and says, oh, by the way, I want, you know, these dull carapaces, and you're like, mm, haven't got any, just go kill some mobs that will drop them. <laughs> right, that's a very good point, actually. Um, well, for now, we've got icy lodestones. I think we've freed up enough. I mean, my bank is chock-a-full. Um, there's another thing here, by the way, Reggie, just before we finish off on this whole storage thing. Um, I noticed that I've got storage panes 1, 2, 3, and 4, and that there's 5, 6, 7, and 8 available. Do you, which panes have you got enabled? I've got 1 through to 4 and the material storage i don't have any extra okay so like there is five six seven and eight that are grayed out yep same here so if i wanted to get them i'm presuming i'm going to try this i'm going to click on the storage agent there and i presume i could go to the guild wars in-game store actually what will happen if i click on that will i get chucked out of the game or will it just bring up the store or will I... it alt tab me to a website or what what will happen I don't know. I've never actually done it from in-game before. <laughs> okay, well, you know what? We might as well try because we're here now. Um, I'm going to apologize up front to Reggie and to you guys because if this kicks me out of the game and, for example, alt tabs and opens up a uh, you know an internet browser or something like that, the recording will stop. Uh, so I apologize. Uh, but let's see what happens. Here we go. I'm going to click on it. Oh, it brings up a warning. This option... Uh, look at that, Reggie's pouting. This option logs you out of your character and connects you to the in-game store to return to the character select screen, exit the store. Okay, so it's not going to kick us out of Guild Wars, but it's going to log us out of the game. You know what, I'm just going to quickly click on OK, and now we'll still be able to chat to Ooh, and Reggie. And there you go, you've there disappeared. We go. Okay, now what I'm staring at, Reggie, is the Guild Wars store. There we go, so, it's put, so it doesn't kick us out of the game, folks. That's good. And we can see here we've got a whole bunch of stuff. One of the things, apart from buying the expansions, which is great, down here, Zunlai Storage Pane. Let's click on that. And of course, we can also see we've got all the costumes uh, down the side here. This is where you come to buy your costumes to get character name changes, to get makeover packs, extreme makeovers, pet unlocks. Yeah, well, so you wouldn't want to buy a character name change with such a fantastic name as Seraphis Heals a lot. Yeah, that's that's right. We wouldn't, <clears throat> folks. We might come back here to buy a character unlock pack, but uh, <clears throat> name change. But don't tell Reggie. <clears throat> anyway, yes, Reggie, you're right. We would never want to I change can hear that. You. Oh, okay. I was just joking. You can see also, folks, here, these are the skill packs that we're talking about. For example, if I click on that core skill unlock pack, if you want to, you can unlock 241 skills just by buying them there. You can unlock the Prophecies one, another 214. Factions is another 330. Nightfall is 350. As you can tell, we're already over 1,000. Eye of the North skill pack is another 100. We've got PvP skill packs. I mean, there's got to be over 1,500, almost 2,000 skills in this game. It's absolutely unbelievable. 
You can buy the Game of the Year upgrade, extra character slots. I think it's fantastic. But what we're looking at right now is the Zunlai storage pane. This adds a single pane, which is 20 slots of storage, to your in-game uh, Zunlai storage chest. This pane is account-based and will be available to all characters on the same account. Um, you may pay purchase a maximum of four panes. And it's basically because we're logging in in the euro side of things. It's saying it's six pounds ninety nine. That's a rip off. Oh my god, that's expensive. You know what? You probably are better to go onto the US store to get them. To be honest, um, you probably buy them through their website. But I'm not paying seven pounds. That's ridiculous. That's like about fifteen bucks, isn't it, Reggie? I, I'm not sure. But gosh, that's really. Oh, expensive. I don't know what the conversion is at the moment, but. I mean, that's real money as well, that's not game money, so... That's right. Yeah. I think we'll make do with that. Anyway, to get out of this, we click the Exit Store button. There we go, back at our login screen. Let's log in to Seraphis Heals a lot. There we go. And we should end up back in old Ascalon City as we load in. I'm not sure if we'll end up next to Reggie or not. And no, we've ended up over by the Great Northern Wall. Where's Reggie? She's going to be yep, over there I by the... I see you. She sees us, can you send us an invite? Go on. We're gonna click on her name, and there's an invite, and we're back to where we were before. All right, well that was interesting. Too expensive for my blood, but interesting all the same. And hey, at the same time, I've managed to uh, free some slots. Although, whoops, I can see I've got some dye uh, in my bag still. I just need to pop them into my storage uh, chest quickly. And then Reggie, finally, we can get to some questing if you're up for it. Was there anything else that we needed to cover off? I don't think so. I think we've covered off a fair amount. Yeah, I think so. Uh, I mean, we do need to go and buy ourselves some new tier clothing. We probably need to um, wade through the skills as well. Uh, but if we do that online, uh, we'll spend another whole episode babbling away and, of course, not get into any action. So we'll either leave the tier to purchases for the next episode or Reggie and I will do them in between filming so we don't have to put you guys through that. Do I have any more spaces for these unnatural seeds? Hang on, just checking if I can get rid of any. Oh, look at that. I've actually got a spare bloody belt patch pouch in, in the bank that I could have used as well. God, it pays to look before you leap, doesn't it? Whoopsie. Uh, what else can I get rid of? Uh, those and those. Sorry about this, folks. We're just trying to make as much space as possible so we can get out and about questing. Um, looking, and of course, the other great thing is you can uh, you can look at the. There we go. We'll drop them in. You can tell what's in your bags by actually just looking at them. You don't really have to hover over the name because each item has its own unique icon, of course. All right, Reggie. I'm ready. Take us to the next quest. Let's get on with things. We've got the Crichton Ambassador here, the only quest in our log. We're going to click on Reggie and hit spacebar, of course, to follow her. Okay. We need to return well, to Ascalon City. Find Warmaster Titus. Yeah, Warmaster Titus. And of course, if we look on our mini map or our mission map, you can see a great big uh, green asterisk there. And there it is on the main map as well. Gosh, when you look at the main map, it's so daunting, it's so huge. It's unbelievable. We've been all around it the city is. and we've only exposed the tiniest little bit of this map. Good lord. We've got lots of grand adventuring coming up in the episodes to follow. It's going to be lots of fun. All right, thanks for leading us here. Here we go. Warmaster Titus. We're going to get 500 worth of experience. Look at that. Reggie has leveled up. Can you believe it? Oh. If we look at ours, we're only halfway through. I'm now level 8. You are level 8. Congratulations to Reggie. Let's give her a round of applause. We'll give her a polite golf clap there. Well done. Good lord. We've still got half a bar to go. Look, she's so graceful bowing. Uh, the King's Message. And of course, Reggie will probably have to zip into her K screen, uh, which is here, and she's probably got herself another attribute point that she's going to have to assign. And of course, once you do level up, folks, make sure you do go in there and assign that because you're wasting uh, good skills if you don't use it. I have an important task for you. Please deliver this royal message to Ambassador Zane of Kryta. Um, and we're going to get ourselves some gear and experience. That's nice. And it looks like they're over here somewhere. Oh, wait a minute. No, they're out in Old Ascalon, Reggie. If they're, I look at our main map. Yeah, they're map, out in the exploration yeah. area. Oh, so this is exciting too because, of course, this is the first time that we're actually going to go out into the great outdoors in the real world. This is not pre-searing stuff anymore, Dorothy. 
this is the real deal that we're going to be going out in in the uh, old Escalon of course you'll remember that all this used to be green used to be nice lush green countryside now it's basically a charred remains and pardon the pun ah, ah, charred well, it remains. Is. if you actually look around and try and remember what old Ascalon looked like you can actually see the um where the river was is now this like dry flat and there's a bit of you know there's like tar or mud there you wow. can see the path that used to go to the township you can actually you can see ah. where it all oh Mom, yeah, it's, it's you right, can see like... where it all used to be. It, it looks the same, but it just, it just all looks so different. Isn't that amazing? They've done really well. Yeah, I'm just going to say the uh, attention to detail that they've uh, done in order to make sure that it really does feel like the place we used to roam around in, that of course has been devastated uh, in the searing. So I couldn't no, agree with you more. It's incredible. Yep, it's just... It's just fantastic the way they've done it. And look at that. Reggie's bringing up her pets already. So look at this. It's an arid wasteland now. We've got wrecks and uh, damaged buildings and signs of life all over the place. Now, where are we going? Oh, we're going up well, here. Well, I always look over here. Just there's the uh, oh. res tribe behind us. And that was always where Gwen used to play. Hang on. Where are you? I'm coming to you. Oh, is that it over oh. there? Oh, because, of course, that yeah. was... This was the old gate, wasn't it? Yes, yeah. Oh my god. And that's now a part of the exploration area instead. It's it, Even the um, the portal have changed places. Yeah, because the portal used to be here. This is where we used to stand around. And you'd go through, and there was the grand staircase there. Oh, and there then it over is. over to the side yep. here, there was the merchant. Oh, of course. Over next to the wall. And that was the gate up there. And, of course, the episode, I think it was a couple of episodes ago, where we saw the dancing elementalists. They were dancing here. Gosh, it really... Yeah, they were. <laughs> it's, it's amazing, isn't it, that, that they've kept the layout, and it's just like, it's really sad. It's like it's all been destroyed, which, of course... Well, you know, I was actually has... playing the game a couple of... about a week or two ago with a, a friend of mine, um, well, at the computer next to me. And... Yeah. Um, he was in a post-searing um, quest and was actually in Fort Rannick, and right. I was in the pre-searing in Fort Rannick, and we were actually comparing sort of you know screen next to screen of the how they looked, and it was amazing how uh, it looked the same, but it was like you know on his it was like buildings fallen down and charred remains, but on mine it was all pretty and turrets built up and it was, just, wow. it was exactly the same but different yeah it's seeing I, the two side by side i couldn't agree with you more the attention to detail that goes into the world building in this game is incredible and again folks look at our map you can see how big this is we're slowly starting to uh, uncover this haze because at the moment it looks just like a big blurry mess and of course underneath all that blur is incredible detail and you know this is just so large it's it's hard to get your head around how enormous this game is and by the way before i forget if you have a look uh, on the mission map here and reggie will see this on hers as well we've got a funny little icon there and it's basically showing us where there are collectors in the world and in fact it's gone as far as to show us if we hover over that collector icon on the mission map it says singed gargoyle skull collector so you don't even have to go over to it to know what materials that they're after and if we do go over and by the way Reggie how awesome is the view around here I mean I know it's death and destruction but we've got those big crystals over there in the distance We've got all the details around here, the fire, the lighting, the texture work. I know it's getting geeky and nerdy, but it's just incredible. I'd, you know, the flavors and feels and the themes of all the different zones are just so well done. Anyway, <clears throat> here we are at this collector. I'm right there with you, though, Sam. I mean, looking around, it is amazing. You know, yep. sort of even the, 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 the trees that used to be there are now burnt out trees. And yep. It's just... Yeah, Can you imagine yeah. how long it's, it's it would have cool. would have taken to design all this and build it? I mean, it's just incredible. And of course, it's not only the visuals that change. Uh, there's new soundtracks. There's new atmospheric effects. It's just all out. <clears throat> anyway, here we go, folks. We can see we've got um, gargoyle, uh, singed gargoyle skulls. Now I'm sure I had some of them in my inventory. Here we go. Uh, I've got two of them, in fact, in my inventory. 
And you can see here now, the collectors around in post searing are absolutely worth going to because you can see that this guy is actually offering, for me anyway, a bunch of blue gear. Now Reggie, I'm imagining that the gear that I'm seeing is going to be different than what you're seeing because of our class differences. For example, you won't have a bunch this of stuff. There's a possibility, but what I'm being offered really isn't. Uh, uh, a draw card for my character. Oh, well hang on. There's, I, there's nothing here that... Well I'm seeing a Fire Staff, a Diesa Icon, a Warhammer of Warhammer Charles Lane. Warhammer of Charles Lane. Oh, so it is staff. the same. <laughs> okay, it, it is looks like the it's same. the same. Alright, well there we go. That's interesting. So obviously different collectors are, are ideal for different classes, but you can see here that this, um, in this case there's a Diesa Icon that has a requirement on it. And this is very important because a lot of people blindly buy this gear and then wonder why the heck it's not working. Here it says DSA Icon Energy plus 6 but that will only occur if the quantifying um, thing next to it in brackets is true and in this case it says requires 5 smiting prayers. Now if we bring up our K window you'll see that my smiting prayers are currently only 3. Now there's nothing stopping me from equipping this DSA Icon um, and uh, I can wear it but it will not give me that energy plus 6 buff because in order to qualify for that I need to uh, have plus 5 in smiting prayers so for goodness sake folks if you're watching at home um, if you're going to remember anything at all remember that to check the requirements of your gear otherwise you're going to spend a lot of time and money and it's going to be wasted because you're not going to get that benefit even if you think you've got it <clears throat> so uh, in this case, uh, what do I have equipped by the way? Let's have a look at my staff here. I've got a starter holy rod and I've got a healing onk. <clears throat> do I want, oh I can't buy anything anyway because of course I don't have enough skulls. Oh I love this elementalist's outfit. It looks so different than the ones in uh, pre-searing. It's all like raging fires. It's so cool. Oh it is. It's all tattered and yeah. chat singed look looking. Look at that vista. Anyway, here we go. And wow, will you look at their armor? How cool looking is that? We'll zoom right in there. That is the best armor ever. That looks so amazing. And of course, if you've been used to pre searing only, everyone kind of looks newbie, including the NPCs. Now you're starting to see um, the design work in Guild Wars really starting to shine through. Because you've got to admit, Reggie, that's one pretty cool piece of armor. Go. We're going to get ourselves a hammer, a whole bunch of XP. Helping the people of Ascalon. Would you help the children of Ascalon and deliver the supplies? Yes, we'll uh, definitely do that. Now, by the way, I've just noticed that quest there. It gives he actually us, has two quests there. He does have two, but one of them, the reward, is something called Energy Tap and Mending. Are they skills that we'll get as a reward for this quest? Or do you not have that quest? It's called um, uh, helping, the people, helping the people of Ascalon. Yep. Do you see it down the I'm bottom there? Sure. It says energy tap and mending. Are they are they skills? Well, my reward is vile touch and penetrating attack. So I would say they are um, skills based on our professions, our chosen professions. That is brilliant. So these are unique to professions. Okay, so there you go, oh, folks. I've just noticed. Can you see this? The the, the quest says deliver the supplies to Ellie Rigby. I know. You know what? It's funny because Eleanor there was Rigby. Eleanor Rigby. I know we. Special song. Yes, it is, and we we passed by her when we <laughs> when we went to the first quest giver in Ascalon City just before. I noticed there was an Ellie Rigby um, behind, oh, I and didn't I was going to say her. something. I know. And oh, I, you know get what? Those people, little jokes. Yeah. Well, people think that these um, pop pop culture um, references and these memes only appear in World of Warcraft. I can tell you categorically folks that there's absolutely a bunch of them in Guild Wars, that's for sure. And in fact there's some really funny ones in Guild Wars, some ones that are so obscure it's ridiculous. Um, even in games like um, Lord of the Rings Online, they have a whole bunch of them as well. It's not just WoW that does the whole pop culture reference thing. Anyway, um, there you go folks. So we were talking last time in the episode where we were talking about skills and we said, you know what, sometimes you can get them from quests. There it is. Proof perfect that we get quests that are um, skills that are related to our uh, class or profession um, from quests out in the world. So that's really good. You don't have to buy all of them all the time. And you're right, Reggie, there's two quests there. Uh, what do we have to do? 
Now, Self to Regent me, Billy. I'm actually going to go over to Witness Rathdin here because he has a quest for me. Oh, yes, he's got one for us as well. And this one's taking us to Regent uh, Valley. Now, of course, folks who've been following our Let's Play ooh. will remember Regent Valley because, and there it is in green on our map, of course, the entire Regent Valley was a nice lush um, forest land last time because that's where Reggie went to train Hello Kitty, isn't it? That's where you got Hello Kitty from, uh, was south of Fort Rannick. Yep, and that's all now a charred waste. Okay, so Witness Raston, what does he want us to do? Uh, craftsman in old Ascalon called Artisan David who's capable of fashioning. Would you take this list to him and bring back the supplies he gives you? Now, notice folks very quickly you'll see in your chat log that we got handed supplies for the orphans and uh, Raston's request if we hit our I key and go into inventory this is something you need to bear in mind that you do get quest items that you have to cart around in your normal inventory space. So you can see there supplies for the orphans quest item, Raston's request quest item if you don't have spare slots in your bags you won't be able to accept the quest so be very careful anyway um we're running out of time reggie pick a quest for us to do do you want to go back to the one that takes us hang on where are they all let's have a look we're hit. i want to do ellie rigby ellie rigby that Eleanor. sounds that sounds good to me is that helping the people of ascalon it is and you can see it's back in the main hub of ascalon city now do you want to run now? Hang on, before we do run there, I'm not suggesting we do this, but we could map travel there. I'm going to click on it. Um, old Escal yeah, Escalon City. If we I traveled there, that would break our party, wouldn't it? Like last time, just like it in pre It would. We'd have to resign, which would map travel us there anyway. Okay, well, let's, let's run though, because of course we haven't seen uh, much of the countryside. So we'll follow you, Reggie, uh, and get back to Lovely. the city to go and see Eleanor Rigby. Well, it's not Eleanor Rigby, is it? Who is it? <laughs> Ellie Rigby. Ellie. <laughs> Classic. Well, Ellie is a very acceptable abbreviation for the name Eleanor. That's true, and I know that you'll definitely know that's true. <laughs> um, <laughs> I do, I do, I do have quite a close connection with someone called Eleanor. That's right, we'll leave that to people's imagination, perhaps. Um, I'm just trying to read the quest flavor, <laughs> flavor text to see if there's any other um, references to the Beatles in there, actually. I couldn't see any. Um, although sometimes it pays reading the quest because they'll slip a reference in there. All right, we're back, and off we go to Eleanor we Rigby. Are. Oh man, it's so cool! Oh, do you know? Uh, here's a test for Reggie for once. Let's see. She's always testing me. Uh -oh. Yeah, let's see if she hmm. knows her Guild Wars inside and out. Okay, so here we go. Nope. We're, <laughs> here we are. We're in Escalon City, Reggie, and if, as we look around. It's all fire and brimstones and stuff. Can you tell me what happens in here when it's winter time in America? Do you know what happens? And have you ever been in here when it's uh, winter time in America? It snows. It does snow. She's dead right. She's obviously done it before. This whole... <laughs> This whole area is actually covered in snow. And in fact, it brings back memories for me of the very first time that I ever came here. And the very first time I played the game, it was in fact winter in America. And what that meant was I got in here and the people that were helping me play the game, they said, by the way, it's not always looking like this because it was coated in snow and there's snowmen around and it looks completely different. And in fact, there are some different vendors and all the rest of it. And they said, once it's uh, gone winter, come back here and you'll see what it really looks like. It looks a lot different, which is another nice touch. There we go. Um, oh, are we picking up this quest? Might as well defend the wall. Oh, I've just gone straight to Ellie. Yep. I'm sure we come back here and pick this one up. Uh, where is Eleanor Rigby? Oh, whoops, not Eleanor. It's Ellie Rigby. Let's select that quest. And remember, well, folks, you just click on my name and pre press space. Oh, you'll there get we me, go. Which I'm standing next to her. Good idea. Thank you for that. And of course, remember, folks, if you change the quest marker in your list, that will actually change the asterisk in your mini map, your mission window, and your main map. There she goes. People often forget about the children of those slain by the searing. Oh dear. Let's say, here we go. Thank you. Go tell our mutual friend that the supplies will be put to good use. Thank Duena. There are people like him around to help those in need. All right, so it looks like uh, that's going to send us back out to old Ascalon, I'd imagine. All right, we have gone way over time. We need to wrap up this episode once again. 
Of course, in the next episode, we'll be doing nothing but questing because now we've covered off all of the systems. You've seen the rune traders, you've seen the skill trainers, you've seen the collectors, you've seen the weapons merchants, you've seen the storage chests. We are basically, unless um, Reggie disagrees, I think we're pretty much set up for life in post searing. What say you? I believe that we are ready for a bit of post searing action without too much distraction. Oh, did you just make up a rhyme? I have no idea where that came from. That was unbelievable. We're ready for some post searing action with minimal distraction. Oh, yeah. I like it. That's going to haunt you forever, by the way. <laughs> oh, I know. That was dreadful. That's terrible. Oh, what a classic. Anyway, as always, folks, <laughs> we, th we thank you at home for putting up with our um, crazy antics, for putting up with Reggie's terrible rhyming, and, of course, for sticking with us <laughs> throughout this Guild Wars series. We certainly hope you're having lots of fun. I know that Reggie and I are. We absolutely love making this for you guys, and we have lots of fun doing it. So on behalf of myself, Sambo, Seraphis heals a lot, the wonderful named monk healer and of course the beautiful Regina Lacerta both in real life and our virtual world it's us saying thank oh, you very much for watching <laughs> take care hope to see you soon bye bye bye